I'm gonna show you how I make my trading card listings on eBay look awesome using an Epson V370 Perfection Scanner. You're going to need a scanner first. I recommend the V370. There's also the V550 and the V600. They're also great alternatives. They're much more expensive. That's pretty much the reason why I recommend the V370. It is the cheapest, it does the job. I've had this one for four years. It is a beast. You won't need anything else, especially if you're a brand new eBay seller or a new person just trading cards in general. Start off with this, get the big ones in the future. So now that you've got your scanner, we need to get the scanning drivers. You just go to epson.com. I put the link in the description. You just go down here, recommend it for you, scanner driver, Epson scan utility, and you hit download. So now we have the scanning software and we have the scanner ready to go. Make sure it's plugged in, the green light is on, and we are ready to rumble. So I'll go through and show you exactly how I do all my settings and how you can change a few settings just to make it look a little bit better. You go straight up full auto mode, all the way down to professional mode. You don't want to touch full auto mode. It's not really good for trading cards in my opinion. Professional mode will have all you need to change as many settings as you want. Before we change any settings though, let's go and have a look at what a real scan looks like with no altered settings, no nothing. So you get your item, place it in the middle, hit scan. I'm just gonna dance while this goes because it does take a while. All right, so the scan's finished, let's have a look. To find the scan that we just did, you go all the way to the bottom, there is a folder with a photo in front, click that, another window will pop up. It'll be location, my documents, pictures or other, I just choose other, I wrote Epson as the thing just so I know where all my scans are. And that's pretty much where you will find yours. So if you wanna do this before you take the scan, perfectly fine. If you want them just to make your own folder in the my documents or pictures, or maybe you wanna put it in a different hard drive because the scans are quite big, they will take up a lot of space on your computer. I just have them in my own Epson drive, you can do whatever you want. Let's go look at that photo. So now we have our image. You can see it's right in the middle. It does look great, not gonna lie, but there's still heaps of space around the image. My face is in the reflection. It's not the best to do something like that. So I'll go in, I'll show you how to set up auto crop, how to change the pictures, how to change the contrast, how to make it look perfect just for you. What we wanna do next is open this bad boy up again. Now you will notice I did use the scanner with the top open. What this does is when you scan with the top open, you get that black background effect. If you did see in the photo I just posted, there's a black background effect and it makes the cards look awesome because it goes through the case. If you do do a scan with the thing closed, you get a white background. As you can see here on the back of the thing is a white film. It doesn't look nearly as good for trading cards in my opinion. You can use it that way. It's also really great to keep the scanner lid open while you're scanning because you don't have to keep closing, open, close and open. It adds a lot of extra work while you're having fun scanning your cards. One thing I do need to mention, and especially if you have pets, is scanners get very dirty very fast. Pet hairs, cat hairs, all of the above, scratches, everything. It gets really bad on these things. So make sure you've got a microfiber on hand. You get some glass clean every once in a while. You clean the screen, make sure it's perfect. Mine, obviously, you can see here, it's not perfect condition. There's some white stuff at the bottom. Don't even know what the hell that is. But I've been using this over 100,000 scans easily. And it works perfectly over the last four years. It has been a little bit beat up over that time, but it's still perfect. Just make sure you clean it down every once in a while. Otherwise you will get pesky cat hairs in your scans. So what we'll do next is we get the item, we place it on the scanner. All the graded trading cards are all kind of like 90 degree angle corners. And just where this arrow is, this is on the V370. The V550 and the V600 are different, but on the V370, I place mine right on the corner here. And I'm going to show you why. We'll hit the preview button. We'll have a look at what this looks like. So we've done the preview and now we actually have a preview of the scan of what it would look like before any setting changes and on the screen permanently. And it's a great feature because you can change the resolution, you can change the colors, you can change everything on this and it will show you exactly what the scan looks like without having to keep doing scans over and over again. Before we do any sort of color changing, we want to crop the item. So what we do here is you go on the preview tab just like that and you just crop out the corners and just like that. So next time we scan, it's actually only going to scan that part of the card and it actually is a huge time saver and it's awesome and it's all automatic. This is the fun stuff. Let's talk about settings. So it started off with original document type, document source, auto exposure, leave all those the same, destination, image type, all this stuff, leave the same, DPI. You can go up to 350, 400, 450, but remember, eBay does just destroy the resolution of images. There's no reason to go further than 300. If it's for documentation, you want to really want to see what your cards look like fully burn, blown up on 600 DPI, 900 DPI. You want to go crazy. You're going to be huge file sizes. Remember that. But yeah, you can do that. But remember, just for eBay, 300 is perfectly fine. It does take much longer to scan on high DPI. Do remember that. But 300, perfectly fine for eBay. So if we scroll down to the bottom here. We have unsharp mask, de-screening, color restoration, backlight correction, dust removal. 
All these things are really good. So as we click these, they should change on the preview screen. Won't change too much. You know, I click color restoration, you see how the color kind of pops on the Charizard a little bit more. I generally don't look do this because, you know, it makes the hollows look really good, but it makes the colors on the outside of the cards, the reds, the greens, the blues, the darks, all the kind of stuff. It's not necessary. And then we've got backlight correction. Now, it's not that great because, you know, we're scanning with the lid open to get that beautiful, amazing looking black background. We don't want to take that away. So turn backlight correction off. Dust removal. This is something I use quite often. This won't like show in the in the scan. You'll have to do a rescan to get dust removal. But you know, people have lots of cat hair, lots of dust around their offices. Perfect. You can go medium. You can go low, medium, or high, whichever one. I think dust removal medium is great if you have a lot of cat hairs, tiny little things you don't want to worry about them. Do remember, it will take little things away, like this little dot in EXP twenty fifth. It'll take that away. It'll take away the dot at the end of like first edition. Sometimes it takes away the Pokemon eyes and stuff like that on Psyduck and Magic Hub. That happens a lot to me. So just remember, these settings are pretty cool. So let's adjust the colors. We have histogram adjustment, tone correction, image adjustment, and color palette. We'll only use two of these. We'll use the histogram adjustment, which is this one here. And we will use image adjustment, which is this one over here. So we'll start off with the histogram adjustment. Usually, it will start you off around 15 around this black arrow. I, I adjust the black arrow all the way to the left and the white arrow all the way to the right. And that's it. Histogram adjustment, that's all you have to do. Black arrow to the left, white arrow to the right. It makes the color of the card look awesome. So this is like the white arrow as you go inwards. Kind of makes it a lot darker. You put it all the way to the right, make it super bright and makes it shine. When we scan the card with the top open, it does give that black background. But if you just adjust this all the way to the left, that's when it really just shows and it pops and it shines through. It makes the card really beautiful. Then we'll do the image adjustment. I don't play around with this too much. You can if you want, depending on what you really want to aim for with your cards. A little bit of brightness upwards is just going to make your card pop like crazy. You don't want to go too much. You know, I think around 15 to 20 is generally okay for some Pokemon cards. You know, depending if it's hollow, if it has texture, if it's non-hollow, it's all different. If you, you don't want to adjust it too much, you don't want to waste too much time, I would say just 15 to 20 on the brightness is perfectly fine. The contrast, 10 to 15, yeah, it's if you can get a little bit too crazy with the contrast here and you can make it look pretty nuts. <laughs> but, you know, I, I I like to have the contrast around maybe like 5 to 10 because, you know, as you see, even on zero, it looks kind of dull. If we just if we just put this to around like 13, it kind of looks pretty good. Rest of them saturation, cyan, magenta, green, red, blue, all that stuff. You just leave that is. Some people I have seen adjust the blue just a little bit, but I don't think it's that necessary. I, th I think just leaving them all as is is completely fine. And just remember this is old software as well. So if you do adjust the preview in any way whatsoever, all your settings are gonna get wiped and you're gonna have to go through and adjust all the image over and over again. So just remember, don't adjust the preview at all. Don't touch it, leave it as it is because it will reset every single time you adjust it. So there are all the image adjustments that I use. Feel free to go through, play with what ones you want. You know, what I like might not be what you like, but this is what I use. It makes it nice and easy. Every single different color, every single different card looks good with my settings. So now when we go to scan, you can either press scan on the actual Epson scanner app, or I just press the button on the scanner. And then I just sit here and wait and dance a little bit. It does make a cool little noise. It kind of whines a little bit, but it's not too bad. So now it'll scan only to the bottom of the card. Perfectly fine. Then I just flip my card. Make sure you flip it this way and you don't have it upside down because then it'll put your photos side by side. You know, same as before, we just wait for it to go all the way down. And as soon as it stops is when you can take it off the scanner and then you can just add your next card. It's super easy, super simple to use a scanner. So if you did it all correctly, you followed everything to the T, it should look like this. You should have your image front and back right next to each other. They should be labeled right after each other, you know, image 36, image 37. If you did it correctly, it will come out like this. And there we have it, our two beautiful scans of this Charizard. You can just see them full resolution, 300 DPI, all the colors adjusted, everything looks great. You can see every single little nook and cranny of all the corners and everything. It's perfect. If you want to show your cards off, if you want to show them on eBay, I think it's super important to have a really good photo like this and not have just like these crappy hold in your hand photos and just, you know, a little bit of an investment, $100, $150 for a scanner like this. You can get beautiful photos like me. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to know anything more about scanners, taking photos, eBay listings, feel free to throw it in the comments. I'll answer every single question I can. If you want a cool video like this on a topic that maybe you haven't seen online, or you just want an expert to explain it to you, just let me know. I can help in any ways. Always reach me on Instagram, the comment section, everywhere. I'm here to help you. My name's Steve, and I hope you have a great day.